colorectal cancer is one of the leading causes of cancer-related deaths worldwide. Most colorectal cancers develop over many years from benign precursor lesions known as polyps. Early detection and removal of these polyps effectively prevents colorectal cancer. CT colonography CTC, is significantly less invasive and provides much higher patient comfort than endoscopic colonoscopy. It also is an option after an incomplete endoscopic colonoscopy. Syngovia CT Colon Workflow provides guidance to accelerate your reading process efficiently and accurately. This movie will show you how to evaluate CT Colon datasets using Syngovia. First, make sure that the study is correctly assigned to the CT Colon Workflow. If it isn't, right-click the study, select Open with CT Colon. Syngovia automatically pre-processes the data and arranges the images in your preferred reading layout and order. It also automatically segments the small and large bowel and synchronizes endoscopic navigation between the supine and prone datasets. In this case, the data is opened with a layout designed for 3D readers. If you prefer 2D reading, other layouts are available. Our 3D layout shows the supine data set on the right and the prone data set on the left of the screen. If you have two monitors, one will show the supine and the other the prone data set. Both monitors will show three MPR segments with orthogonal orientation, a double contrast global view for a better overview of the colon anatomy, a virtual dissection view that provides a planar image of the mucosa and an endoscopic view where you can perform a fly-through that is synchronized in all segments. The synchronization of the supine and prone datasets is based on the automatic segmentation of the small and large bowel in both series. So, to ensure proper synchronization, check that both the large bowel, shown in white, and the small bowel, shown in blue, are correctly recognized in the global view segment. If correction is needed, select Mark Unmark for deletion from the upper right corner menu and click on the area you want to correct. Notice how the color will change accordingly. Let's start the fly through in the endoluminal segment of the supine data set. As you can see, the virtual endoscope is automatically positioned in the rectum and ready to start the navigation. Just hold the right mouse button and drag it forwards or backwards in the center of the segment to control the direction and speed of the navigation. 3D rotation can be done by dragging the left mouse button. By default, when you stop the navigation, the corresponding segments of the prone data set are updated automatically. Select the option Sync Volumes on the fly from the upper left corner menu if you want to have the volume synchronized during the navigation. MPR segments are also synchronized to display the lumen of the colon in the same position. You can navigate by dragging the right mouse button vertically or scrolling the mouse wheel. Window corrections can be done dragging the middle mouse vertically and horizontally. The left mouse button allows you to zoom when the cursor is in the periphery of the segment or to pan when the cursor is in the center of the segment. Notice how the cursor changes its shape to show which function is active. If you are a 3D reader, you might find it useful to zoom the MPRs to display the lumen of the colon always at the position of the virtual endoscope, even during navigation. If you want to navigate directly to another segment of the colon, for example if a stenosis on the colon occludes the endoluminal view, click on the Set Location option to reposition the virtual endoscope and draw a straight line in any MPR segment in the direction you want to look at.
Setting the virtual endoscope is also possible in the Global View segment. You can find other useful default positions for the endoscope in the upper left corner menu. For example, go to rectum or turn around. This function allows retrograde navigations once you have reached the cecum by anti-grade navigation. If you find a potential lesion, you can either mark the lesion or measure it in 2D or in 3D. In any case, a finding will be created in the Findings Navigator for further archiving. You can always come back to review the findings in the Findings Navigator. To help increase your confidence that you have detected all relevant lesions, Syngovia provides you with tools such as automatic virtual dissection, fecal tagging and stool removal or PEV, polyp enhanced view. The virtual dissection view is automatically synchronized with the endoluminal view, showing a virtually unrolled colon behind and in front of the position of the virtual endoscope. This view allows you to diagnose the colonic surface without missing anything, for example, behind the folds of the colon. In the lower left corner menu, you will find options for tagging or removing the stool in case oral contrast medium was used for colon preparation. They allow you to easily differentiate a potential polyp from stool in the endoluminal view. Click on Show PEV to display the results from our second reader tool. It will help you identify solitary structures that are consistent with polyps with respect to shape, density and connectivity. A list of PEV findings is shown in the Findings Navigator for you to review. To distinguish them from the user findings, the PEV findings are shown with a computer symbol. To convert a PEV finding into a measurement, click on the finding, right click into its annotation box in the endoluminal view and select Start Semi-Automatic Measurement. Now you can measure the polyp size and the PEV finding is converted into a user finding. All results are conveniently collected in a report compliant with CRADS. Saving and archiving this report and the results series is as easy as completing the workflow by clicking the Save and Send button.